Number 81. Suppose you hit a steel nail with a 0.5 kilogram hammer initially moving at 15 meters per second and brought to rest in 2.8 millimeters. Letter A, what average force is exerted on the nail? All right, so here we essentially have a hammer hitting a nail. We wanna find the force that's basically imparted uh, to the nail. So we realize that we have a certain initial velocity, a certain uh, distance over which this velocity will change to zero, right? So we also know the final velocity, right? We can write that in, so final velocity here will be zero. And we also know the mass, right, of the hammer. So we're starting to think to ourselves, probably, uh, if we need to find force, right? You're thinking of some of the equations. How do we how do we calculate force? Well, the most basic one is going to be force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration, right? Now we have the mass, and then you're looking at these variables and you're saying, well, I don't have the acceleration here, but oh my goodness, back to kinematics, right? I could probably use these variables to find acceleration. So we're probably going to be using this particular formula. All right, let me just make that M a little neater. So now that I know we're going to be using this formula, or most likely, now I'm going to go hunting for how to find my acceleration. So we realize we have an initial velocity, basically a change in distance, right? And here we have now a final velocity. So we want to try to tie those three variables to acceleration somehow. So we need to think of a formula. What's the formula, ladies and gentlemen? The formula is this, right? That the final velocity squared will be equal to the initial velocity squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by that uh, displacement or change in displacement. So we know the final velocity is zero, right? We're going to solve this uh, for A. So what we can do now is we can subtract all, you know, subtract the VI to the left-hand side. And now we're going to have uh, 2AY, right? And now what we're tasked to do is now we are going to be uh, have to divide by 2Y, okay? Now here's the thing, right? If you're looking at the negative sign here, now you're saying, okay, great. I'm going to divide out that 2Y now. You know, I'm going to get my A value here and it's going to be negative vi squared all over 2y, that should make sense, right? Um, don't forget here, in, in terms of the dynamics of how I frame the problem, the initial velocity is going down. So this value is negative, right? But when you square that result, this term up here will be positive, all right? And then what about this y down here, right? When you plug in that value for y, its value must also be negative. I have it in as a positive down here, but I'm just giving you the magnitude, right? Once you start plugging it into your formula, you gotta start thinking about the signs of these things. Why is this negative? Well, because the displacement is pointing down, right? The final, the final height is gonna be lower than the initial height, okay? So that's why it's, you know, we do final minus initial. So it's less minus more, obviously that'll be negative. So if this is negative, this term is positive, and this is negative, what's the overall acceleration? The overall acceleration of the hammer is positive, okay? What does that mean? It just means that there's a net acceleration vector pointing upward, okay? That's all it means, right? Positive acceleration, all it means is the direction. So that should make sense, right? The hammer is slowing down. Now some, I, I know it's very common to kind of Think of this, well, if the hammer's slowing down, it should be decelerating, so the overall answer here should be negative. No, 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 I don't, don't use that term, all right? Just talk about positive acceleration and negative acceleration, all right? The hammer is going to be experiencing a positive acceleration, all right? Why? Because there is, it's slowing down in the negative y direction. So if it's slowing down in the negative y direction, there must be some acceleration pointing upward and therefore it's positive and which is this is what it tells us all right anyway moving forward so now if you notice though right if you're if you if we're thinking about this um the question is asking us what average force is exerted on the nail and we just came to the conclusion that the acceleration that the hammer is experiencing right is going to be positive okay but here i have in my little my little picture here, I'm, I'm looking for the force imparted on the nail. So here's the thing, right? We're talking about 
you know, when we're using these values here, we're talking about information about the hammer. So when I use this information to find the acceleration of the hammer, I'm finding then the force on the hammer. Okay, the force on the hammer. I've talked about this in many much detail back in the force chapter. So if we're finding the force on the hammer by using this data, how do I find the force then on the nail? Well, that's where Newton's third law comes in, equal but opposite forces, all right? So in other words, when I, calculate, when, I, when I plug in my values here, when I plug in, this is the force on the hammer, that's gonna be equal to the mass on the hammer and the acceleration experienced on the hammer. So when we calculate this value, it's going to be a positive answer. So when I plug in 0 0.500 for the mass of the hammer, the acceleration of the hammer, we just spoke about that, that's gonna be negative vi squared all over 2y. Well, I should have just left, let me just leave this as m for now, okay? Mass of the hammer, and then these are all values for the hammer, right? All right. So let's now, okay. So the force on the hammer here, let's start plugging in the values. So this is 0 0.500. This is now negative. The initial velocity was pointing down, so it's negative 15. But remember, it's negative 15, this whole thing squared. So who cares, it's gonna become positive. And this is then negative, and this is now two times our y value. But remember, that has to be negative because it's pointing in the negative y direction. So there's gonna be negative 0 0.0028, okay? So the force on the hammer will be, let's calculate it, 0.5 times now 15 squared, all divided by then two times 0 0.0028. Okay, so here we have a value now of about uh, 2.01, we'll do three sig figs. So 2.01 times 10 raised to the uh, four, times 10 raised to the fourth Newtons, okay? So this is the force on the hammer and it's positive, meaning it's pointing up. Now this force is the same force that is then going to be imparted to the nail here. What's the only difference? The only difference is in terms of its direction, right? Newton's third law says that whatever force is imparted on the hammer must also be imparted on the nail. So in other words, given the context of my picture, the force here overall should then be a negative value because I know this relationship that the force of the hammer must equal, or the force on the hammer must equal the negative value of force on the nail, okay? So that being the case, I can answer this question in terms of a negative value, but the problem here is, again, it's all relative to how I frame this problem. How did I know that there's a vertical nailing here, right? How do I know that this problem isn't rotated 90 degrees where here's the nail now, and you're taking this, this hammer, right? I don't even know how I drew it before. <laughs> I got lucky there, guys, uh, and and I'm and I'm you know hammering the nail into a wall here. How do I know that that's not the how the problem should be framed? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. So therefore, in terms of the context of how I've drawn it, the force should be negative. But if you were to answer the problem, all right, two, negative two point oh one times ten to the fourth newtons, you could probably suffice with just giving the positive answer. Why? Because there is no particular direction that they had given us. All right. So anyway, hopefully that's good. I mean, that's extremely, uh, you know, detailed. So that I, I think, um, I hope there are no questions. I, I, I won't know. But uh, anyway, um, letter B. How much is the nail compressed if it is 2.5 millimeter in diameter and 6 centimeter long? Okay, so here we're dealing with basically, right, we're talking about steel compressing, all right? So we're dealing with basically Young's modulus. Here's the formula down here. So let's just take the force is equal to Young's modulus for steel multiplied by the deformation or the change in length divided by the initial length multiplied by A. So it says by how much is the nail compressed? In other words, right, in other words, how much is the deformation? So really they want us to solve for delta L here, all right? So let's just solve this thing right off the bat for delta L. Uh, now when we do so, right, Young's modulus comes down to the denominator, the initial length comes up to the numerator, and the area also comes down to the denominator. All right, that's just simple. You don't have to worry about all the crazy um, uh, algebra there. 
So here, the change in length is going to be equal to F times the initial length of the nail, uh, then multiply, uh, excuse me, divided by then Young's modulus times the area. Now they told us the diameter, right, of the nail, uh, and we know that the nail head is generally circular. I don't know if they actually, well, they told us the diameter, so obviously it's a circle, but, you know, commonly, I think we also know that nails have circular heads, most of them, right? So we have the force here going to be multiplied by the initial length, all divided by Young's modulus, now multiplied by pi r squared. So remember, I just need the radius, okay? And it has to be in terms of meters. So now all we have to do here is just plug in some of the values, all right? Now, it doesn't matter if you plug in a negative or a positive here for F in terms of finding the amount that it's going to change, right? The only thing it'll tell you is just by in which direction, but we know that it's going to be compressed. There's no way the hammer is going to hit this nail and it's going to, it's going to expand somehow, right? That's impossible, okay? So if you were to, um, you know, if you were to plug in all the values, we have the initial length, and I guess, you know, if you wanted to consider the the uh, force being uh, negative, you'd get a negative delta L, and that would kind of give you some insight that it is being squished. But again, it doesn't matter. You know it's going to be compressed, so just plug in the positive answer and just state it then in the way, uh, just state it in your final answer, meaning plug in the positive one here, point uh, 2.01 times 10 to the fourth times the initial length, so it was six centimeters long. Remember, we need it in terms of meters, so just move the decimal two places to the left, so 0 0.06. Divide that then by Young's modulus for steel. I got it over here for you guys, so this is 2.10 times 10 to the 11th, and then multiply that by pi times the radius. Now, this is the diameter, right? So you gotta take this value and divide it by two to find the radius, and then you also have to convert that, right, into meters, so move the decimal three places to the left, so there's gonna be point zero zero two five all over two and this is running into that and that's squared so let's just plug it on into the calculator so uh, i'm going to use the exact value from before for the force and we're going to take that and multiply it by 0 0.06 divided then by 2.1 times 10 to the 11th times then pi times then in parentheses 0 0.0025 over two and then square that and we get a value here of about, the change in length is gonna be about 1.17, 1 right? 1.17 times 10 raised to the uh, negative three, it looks like, times 10 raised to the negative three, and that's in terms of meters. You wanna convert that into millimeters, be my guest, just multiply that by, uh, multiply that by 1,000, or if you wanna do centimeters, multiply by 100. Anyway, all right, so that takes care of that. And now we're left with, uh, last but not least, what pressure is created on the one millimeter diameter tip of the nail? So now we have to find the diameter, uh, excuse me, the pressure here at the tip. So, you know, this one's fairly straightforward. I'm gonna do it up here on the upper right. We're dealing with force, pressure, and essentially area, right? And we're gonna assume that the area of the tip here is circular. So we have then pressure is equal to force divided by area. We're asked to find the pressure, so we're good. So the amount of force, whatever force was generated up uh, by the head is also gonna be the same as the force generated by, you know, down at the tip. The only difference is that the area of the head is different than the area of the tip. So the pressures on both will be different, but the forces will be the same. So I do have the force here. So this is just the force on the nail, which we spoke about already, then divided by the area. So here we have the diameter, right? We gotta take that value divided by two and then also make sure that it's in meters so 0 0.001 all over two, and then square that basically, right? So now since I'm already plugging this, whoa, 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 almost forgot something, right? So this is just pi r squared, let me do that first. This is just force on the nail, and now let's plug in all the values, all right? So the force here is again gonna be 2.01 times 10 to the minus four, and then this will be then divided by pi, multiplied by that radius of 0 0.001 all over two squared. All right, and then we can find the pressure. And by the way, when you state this down here, you can just say, right, we were talking about this before, I forgot to write it down, but you can just say, you know, this is compressed. That's how much it's compressed, all right? So let's calculate the value up at the top. I'm gonna to use the uh, exact value again for the, for the force, and then we'll take that and divide it by, wait, what? How did it become, <laughs> how did, the, guys, how did this, how did this become a negative? I don't know. 
made a silly mistake almost. That's a four, positive four. All right. That's why when I plugged in, I'm looking back at the work. I'm like, wait a minute. So um, take that value, then divide it by now pi. So make sure you have your parentheses here. Okay. So pi times then parentheses again, 0 0.001 all over two, square that. And here we're going to get a lot of pressure, right? 2.56 roughly, 2.56 times 10 to the 10th. And this is in terms of Pascal because I used all the standard units. All right, guys, so that finishes up this problem. And we're on to the next. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.